we now have about 60, 65 students a year coming together in Hong Kong every summer for three weeks. Students from throughout Asia, as well as a, number, a small number of students from the United States. Whether you're on your own or it's your first time in another country, Hong Kong is an incredibly safe place to be. Both the city is safe, but also the university. And, you know, and the, the dormitory, everything is, is taken care of. You have to have a security pass to get into the dormitory. Um, there's security everywhere. I think another great benefit um, for a program like this is that English is the language of our academic course. So obviously everyone coming to this program speaks fluent English. And so many people in Hong Kong also speak at least some English. So it's a little bit of a comfort zone. I think that's, that's sort of nice, if, especially maybe for students who don't have a whole lot of international experience under their belt and if they're a little nervous about their first overseas experience. I think Hong Kong and the people of Hong Kong make it a very easy transition. I think Hong Kong, we think of it as a bridge between East and West and also maybe a bridge between the old and the new. And that's always been very intriguing to us. In a short amount of time, you're able to interact with students from a number of countries in the region. So here in Hong Kong, for example, we have you know, 17 countries represented this summer. So in three weeks, what an amazing opportunity to learn from, learn with people from so many countries and cultures within Asia. Many people haven't left their home countries before, haven't left their families home before, and that's part of the reason why we exist, is to sort of give that opportunity in a very safe and a very comfortable, um, I think a very inviting environment. Obviously I think TFAS has the best faculty, I think we have the best guest lecture series, but I think what we also have the best of is students. It's very competitive. People who come here have, speak multiple languages, have some incredible experience in, in their home countries and sometimes abroad as well. So the students who apply to us are very serious. Um, we also do interviews with every student. And so you get a student body, which you don't necessarily get at your home university. You're getting a specific group of people who are choosing to come and study with us who feel very, very passionately about coming to this program, and I think it makes a world of difference. I think fair trial right is the most important one because it can give us the very secure state and also a very, I mean, certainty one in the, our society. And here is the statement that we would like to stipulate in our Bill of Rights, and now I want to read it to all of you. The individual, uh, so in order to uplift individuality and restore the social fabric, become a bit one of the fundamental to our declaration of right is the right to life, liberty, ownership of property, and self-determination. And this right, what, what do you mean by Everyone that? wants to be here. Everyone's excited about the learning. Everyone's excited about teaching, I think, because as much as I think our students learn from the outstanding faculty and guest lecturers, by the end of the program, they learn just as much from their colleagues in the classroom. Okay, good day everybody. Um, we are the citizens of Group 2. That's the name of our country, and we are the drafters of the Bill of Rights. So uh, just to give you an introduction of the process that we use, we use a deliberative uh, process to arrive at a consensus on rights. So a deliberative process is essentially where each of us... Um, we've also adopted a Lockean and a Hayekian approach, and by that I mean that um, we believed in the natural uh, rights theory, and we also wanted to have a lot of the decision making at the individual level. on your free time and when you want to go sightseeing in Hong Kong. We're actually located on Hong Kong Island, but to get to sort of the more tourist district, it's very easy to take a bus downtown. Um, 
to take the MTR somewhere, to take the Star Ferry across. And it's most students easily figure it out on their own because it's, it's pretty efficient, pretty simple. But we also always do have a local Hong Kong resident who's assisting us all summer and lives on site with the students in case anyone has any questions or concerns. Maybe this is their first time out of the country, but I can almost assure you it won't be their last. They get a, they get a great taste for travel, for learning, for being in different countries and cultures, and I think that's it's wonderful. But in addition to that sort of those sort of social friendships, you've really got potentially great professional contacts for the rest of your life. You have access not only to the other 60 students that you study with in your institute, right, but the hundreds and soon thousands who've gone through this program in Hong Kong as well. We have a network for you of TFAS alumni who want to help you. I always tell the students at the beginning of a TFAS program, that this is the beginning, just the beginning of your relationship with the Fund for American Studies. Even the end of the program is really still just a beginning. We're not just reaching 60 students in Asia this summer. We're really reaching thousands because the skills and the knowledge that they learn here, they're going to take back to their colleagues at their home universities, to their communities, to their families, and so it's sort of geometric progression by just working with this small group of individual leaders because they are all leaders.